With the remote in his hand, he sat down and looked at me in silence. I had no idea what he was up to or what his musical choice would be this time. He pointed the remote and pressed play. The music that came out of the speaker shocked me. I didn't know who it was. It was a CD I surely didn't believe to be part of my collection. It felt like Michael was trying to torture me. The music was, well, it was bluegrass. I hate bluegrass music. What are you talking about? He pressed pause on the remote. Bluegrass? No. I hate bluegrass music. You were talking about you, but blaming your lack of perception on this particular style of music. Without looking, he pushed play and nodded his head at me. I started to pick up my bass so I could play along, but with his eyes still closed, he tucked his long hair behind his right ear and whispered, Listen. I didn't know what he wanted me to listen for, but I figured that if I acted like him, maybe I could listen like him. After a few minutes, Michael spoke. Blue Moon of Kentucky by Bill Monroe. He is the father of bluegrass music. Listen to the bass on this track. Can you play like that? Of course I can. Country music is easy to play. One, five, one, four, no problem. First of all, this is bluegrass. There is a difference. It is closely related to country music, but it is also related to jazz. They're kissing cousins. You may not hear it yet, but you will one day. Some of the best improvisers on the planet play bluegrass, and playing it may not be as simple as you think. Now, I admit that I hadn't listened to much bluegrass or country music in the past, so maybe he was right. I couldn't hear it. But there was one point I really felt he was wrong about. I knew this type of music was easy to play, no matter what he said. It only took a few minutes for me to realize that, once again, Michael was right. He introduced me to the nuances of the music by asking me to pay close attention to how the bass player articulated each note in that particular song. There was much more to Mr. Monroe's music than I'd previously realized. Notice how each note starts and ends. Listen to the way he attacks each note and notice whether the notes are long, short, or in between. Recognize the life of each note. Can you hear the beginning, middle, and end of each one? If he had articulated differently or changed the duration of any note, would that have changed the feel of the song? Again, Michael sat back and closed his eyes, so I did the same. I tried to pay attention to the life of each note. The song was in 3-4. I noticed that the bass player was playing whole notes, except that he didn't let each note ring for its full duration. He would cut them off just before each downbeat. I also realized that if the notes had been any shorter, the song would have had a little more bounce, and if they were any longer, the song would have felt slower. The relationship between the slow 3-4 time signature and Bill's rhythmic way of singing gave the song an interesting feel. Also, the attack of the acoustic bass felt different than an electric bass would have felt. How the bass player played each note helped dictate the feel of the song. It made me think of how I usually approached my notes. I rarely let them ring. I usually attacked them hard and fast. I thought about each note having a life, as Michael had alluded. Listening to the bass player caused me to realize that I rarely gave my notes enough air. But the most amazing thing was that in allowing myself to listen to Bill Monroe so deeply, I enjoyed his music.